in the dead of night. That's so dramatic. <laughs> when I'm alone in my room, sometimes I stare at the wall and I wonder to myself. I say self and myself be like, ooh, what you wonder? And I wonder when my time will come. You know? When will I be called out? Or worse, canceled. Hey YouTube world, it's me, Evelyn. Last year, I made a video about my biggest fear. My biggest fear is getting dragged by Black Twitter. And I mean, y'all tell me, it seems like things have only picked up since then in public facing news as a whole. More controversies, more scandals, things that are well deserved and a long time coming, and then some things that are just a reach, like a like a Kevin Durant arm span, old Gumby arm. The term call out culture has been coined by who? I don't know, I'm not gonna look it up. Every day we're made aware of the ways big and small that our faiths are flaming garbage. And it all makes me a little nervous, to be honest, because I don't know if y'all have noticed, but I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I never said I was perfect. So in an effort to preempt what feels like the inevitable, in this video, I'm gonna call myself out, okay? I'm gonna beat you to it. Boop. Number one, yes. I was Pocahontas for Halloween one year. Yes, there are photos. Yes. That's me trying to paint with all the colors of the wind. At the time, I, I felt like I was fulfilling a childhood dream. And I knew the concept of my culture is not a costume, but I thought that applied to generic things like being a Mexican. <laughs> I thought it was okay if I was like a very specific character like Disney's Pocahontas. Isn't that cosplay? Number two. Mm, mm. I do not immediately, if ever, to be honest, boycott corporations. <laughs> Even when their policies or the actions of their employees or even CEO directly conflict with my existence or uh, my personal values and beliefs or even casual opinions, okay? And yeah, so yes, yes, I am part of the problem and I am the reason why we can't band together to overthrow and eventually eat the rich, but Chick-fil-A is just gonna have to satiate me for now because it's delicious and I'm not there yet, I'm not there. Number three, and this one was brought to my attention by a very disturbed and creepy person who in the spring summer of 2018 scrolled through Instagram to find a photo of me from the summer of 2013. That is five years worth of photos. It is a photo of me wearing a shirt. On it is the flag of the United States of America. And I'm doing a hand gesture that one would call a salute, which would lead you to believe that not only am I proud to be an American, but that I personally condone the atrocities this country's government has committed against people domestically and internationally from pre-colonial times until present day. This person scrolled through five years of photos and commented something like, ew, they said ew, which I thought was interesting, ew, um, I can't believe you would like support the flag of the colonizer. Um, the emblem of the oppressor or something like that. I don't know, I deleted the comment because I was being immature, all right? I deleted the comment because not only was I creeped out by someone who scrolled through five, but also I was just annoyed, all right? It was an annoying comment. And the immaturity in me wanted to be like, okay, but you probably throw down for Thanksgiving dinner, don't you? AKA a day of mourning, don't you? You probably vote in elections, don't you? You probably use the master's tools to dismantle the master's house, don't you? And you've probably participated in an old Navy 4th of July sale at least once, leave me alone. I love a good flip flop. Number four. For the purpose of this video, I try to look back through my Twitter to find problematic tweets. Now, apparently your girl got 41,000 tweets, spanning a decade. Well, I couldn't even stomach it, to be honest. I almost deleted my Twitter on site. All that trash is in the Library of Congress. In my mind, sitting next to a digital copy of I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings is a tweet by me about how pizza it's delicious. 
and it really made me wonder how some of y'all be finding the problematic tweets. How, who got the time? Who got the patience? Who is paying y'all? Low key, I'm still thinking about deleting all my tweets and I gave up trying to comb through and find a problematic tweet in there. Although I know it exists. I know it exists because I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I never said I was perfect. Okay, so what's the point of all of this? I don't want to revel in being problematic or be satisfied in my ignorance. And I don't wanna be happy with not learning or not growing. Quite the opposite, actually. This was a good exercise for me to serve as a reminder to practice patience and grace with other people because I am going to really want that same mercy extended to me when the time comes. If I ever say something to offend you, if I ever say something hurtful, you don't have to associate with me. I understand the concept of impact versus intent. I understand. Lily, I do. Lily, I do understand. I get. I'm just saying, remember me. I don't want to be canceled. Held accountable. Sure. If I must. Yes. I yes. And I'm not talking about crimes. <laughs> that's, an that's another thing. That's... If you find a restorative justice activist, I'm not the one, but oh my gosh, she used to fat shame people on Instagram and now she's like all body posy. <laughs> and I'm like, girl, wasn't that the, isn't that a good thing? Isn't that what we want? When you know better, you ideally, you do better. If you don't think people's opinions and mindsets can change over time as they grow and as they learn, and instead you would just prefer to toss them like the flaming garbage that they are, then go ahead, Oscar, save me a seat. More and more, we have the ability to share opinions that nobody asked for. Matter of fact, you didn't ask for this, for this video, all right, but you clicked on it. So I'm gonna put that one on you. The things that I thought versus the things that I think versus the things I will think in the future about race or religion or sexuality or Azealia Banks or government, politics, capitalism, Kanye West, all those things are shifting. And get this, everything I think doesn't need to be a public statement. Instead, they can become personal conversations that I have with people that I care about or people in my immediate environment. And maybe I'm showing a little bit of my bias here because I have access to people and maybe if you live in a homogenous community, maybe you don't have access to different types of people. And I understand that like Twitter can be helpful if you're trying to reach out and learn. But I still believe that as far as progress goes, that if you're in the arguing mood, argue with your uncle at the family reunion this summer. Don't argue on a Facebook status with a Ralph Wilkerson from West Virginia. I think what makes me the most nervous about call out culture is it creates this immense amount of pressure to be perfect. And instead of trying to go out into the world and connect with people and find truth, we bottle it up and stew in our own ignorant juices because we're scared of being wrong. Oh, I'm so sorry. Isn't that cosplay though? Okay, okay. All these thoughts came about because I'm about to dig into Francesca Ramsey's new book while well, that escalated quickly. And I feel like she feels me on this topic. That makes me double interested in the book because to be honest, I, viewed Francesca as a nuck if you bucker on the internet. And I think it's cool that it seems like she's realized that you can't spend your time slamming people. Her book is available on Audible and she narrated it. So I'm really excited to listen. Shout out to Audible for sponsoring today's video. They have a massive selection of audiobooks, podcasts, and other types of programming you can listen to. Books to get your mind right. You know what I'm saying? So you can be a better human being. You can press play on an audiobook and listen during that hike, that road trip, that summer vacation. So to start your free 30-day trial membership, visit audible.com slash Evelyn, E-V-E-L-Y-N, or text Evelyn to 500-500. You get a free audiobook. You can download my recommendation, which I'm about to start reading, Francesca Ramsey's book, well that escalated quickly, or you can choose whichever book you can find on Audible. The book is yours to keep even if you don't continue your membership because Audible ain't trifling, all right? So visit audible.com slash Evelyn or text Evelyn to 500-500. In the comments below, be honest. 
tell me about a time where you learned better so you did better. If this whole video wasn't enough, I'll go first in the comments right now. See you there. And I will see you on the internet somewhere. Bye.